Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason. This is a daily relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. When I say stress, anxiety, and panic attacks, I'm just trying to cover um, like a big spectrum of uh, situations where someone might need or be helped by a relaxation session. Uh, and the other reason I put that title is because I myself used to ex have extreme panic attacks uh, when I was uh, younger. And I still have them sometimes. Uh, I still get anxious, still get stressed and stuff. So I have, I have ways of dealing with those things. Um, but there was a time when my whole life collapsed because of it. Because, um, you know, this is back in 2002. End of 2002, and it lasted for quite a while. <laughs> Well, what I learned from that is a few things. Don't ignore what your body's telling you. You may not understand what your body's telling you, but don't ignore it. So if you're, for example, example, if you're feeling dizzy or feeling overwhelmed physically, struggling to catch your breath or something like that, stop what you're doing if you can. If you're driving, pull over. If you're... If you're working and you're doing something and you, you tell your boss, team leader, or if you are the team leader, tell someone you work with that you're taking some time out. Even if it's a case of just sitting down for 10 minutes and just getting aware of how you're feeling. If you have trouble breathing, if you have trouble with your chest, any pains or anything, get that scene straight away unless you know the cause of it if you know that it's muscle um, then you know if you know what it causes and it's fine then that's okay or if you've got angina and you know you just need to take tablets to help that but find out the cause find out if there's something going on other than uh, stress or anxiety or panic with my situation, I did that. I went to the doctors and was told there's nothing wrong with me. I was told it was just stress and I was put on antidepressants. I was first of all put on anti, what, blockers? Beta blockers, I think they're called. And antidepressants, which I've been on a few times before. So if you do, going back to if you do have those kinds of feelings, take a step back from what you're doing. Have a break from what you're doing. Don't just battle through regardless. You're not, well, I say, unless you are on the battlefield, you know, I was going to say you're not on a battlefield or in the trenches or anything, but of course some people are. There are people out there that are in the armies and the armed forces. So unless you're in that kind of situation where you've got no choice but to go forward, do stop and take a step back. Give yourself space. You know, if you are in the armed forces and you're having these feelings, then I would say it's really important to also let other people know and contact whoever your sergeant is or whatever, um, because it could be really damaging, not just for you, for others as well. But I'm not here to talk about the military armed forces because I don't know much about that stuff. What I am here to talk about is, you know, panic, anxiety, stress, anxiety, and panic. They're all intermingled. They're all part of the same, the same little gift, the, kind of the gift that nobody wants. It's a, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful package. And it's, uh, it's very unusual because I remember when I first had my first uh, panic attack. I didn't know it was a panic attack. And then I also realized later on that it wasn't the first one I'd ever had. 
I just hadn't recognised what they were because I just soldiered through and ignored it, uh, thinking it was just um, shortness of breath. Uh, you know, I remember I was in a nightclub back in 1999 or 2000 and I, was, I had to come out because I couldn't breathe. I just put it down to people smoking because I'd given up cigarettes. I put it down to that and it was I was overwhelmed by the smoke and I was struggling to breathe and I'd but it was not in a um didn't have any pains or anything it was just uh, you know and it was a panic attack and I was all fuzzy and dizzy in my head and you know uh thoughts racing and stuff like that but with the bipolar which I have I have times when my thoughts are racing at a million miles an hour. Might sound weird considering how quietly, maybe how slowly I talk, but I don't always talk this slowly. Um, generally, I think this is kind of my demeanor is to be quite slow, but there are times when I'm just like, or something really, you know, everywhere, but less, less, less than before. So it's a case to start with, I would say, of just being aware of where you are. That's why some of the mindfulness techniques or um, sessions that I've done so far can help you to be more in touch with where you are. Because for me, I think the things that help me most with the panic attacks, the steps that I took, I also did some things that actually didn't help and made it worse. But I did some things that helped. I I left the job I was in. I'm not sure if that was a very good idea, if I'm honest, because um, what I did is I was also at college at the same time. I was working part time. I could have stayed working part time and left college and just got through it. I think that might have been the best thing, but at the time I wasn't thinking very straightly. If I'm honest, I was my head was all over the place, and all I knew is that I had these feelings coming up whenever I was at work and everywhere else really. But it seemed to really be quite bad when I was at work, so I left my job. I got myself a little part-time job. But it was just less hours, just a few hours a week, a couple of days, a few hours uh, in a little shop. But one of the things that helped was meditation. So I got involved in meditation long before I lost that, that I left my job, you know, because this went on for a couple of years before I left my job. And I found being able to get in touch with how I felt physically choosing to get in touch with how I felt gave me a little bit more power over it instead of the feelings being forced upon me which is how it felt at the time it's like suddenly I had all these physical feelings and I didn't know where they were coming from or why they were there to, to actually sit down on a cushion or in a chair and focus on different parts of my body focusing on my breathing not trying to force my breathing to be uh, calm or slow not trying to force my muscles to be relaxed noticing my mind noticing when I wasn't meditating noticing when my mind did take me off to a different place uh, when I'd lost concentration that really helped really helped and which is why I try and pass it on a bit I try to include it in the hypnosis sessions that I do try and include the mindfulness I don't call it mindfulness in the sessions but um, if you look at the oldest hypnotic hypnosis um, script of you know uh, techniques and how to do it 
from many, many years ago, and I've got books from a long time ago, and they'll say, you know, look at the different parts of the body individually. They don't mention mindfulness, they don't mention meditation, they don't mention Buddhism or anything like that. So, you know, Buddhism's been around for, what, two and a half thousand years. Meditation's been around for longer than that. Um, meditation, in fact, uh, there's documents saying that he, Jesus used to meditate. He was a, a master of meditation. And meditation was used in pretty much all the religions uh, back in the early days. And then there's a fine line between meditation and hypnosis when it comes to the alpha, beta, theta ray, you know, parts of the brain, uh, levels of awareness or whatever during the um, hypnotic and meditational time. There's, there's kind of a part where it's kind of shared. We sort of travel down the, the same road, as it were. So... I guess this is more of a guidance than a than a session today but the things that I found one of the things that I found the most benefit was meditation I also exercised and I've always apart from the last couple of years or so but I've been quite an um, exercise quite regularly whether it's different martial arts whether it's boxing whether it's running, whether it's in the weights in the gym. I, I like to exercise and try and keep fit um, generally. But what I did during this period is, uh, first of all, I started off in the gym and then I tried to work my way. I started doing Kung Fu, Wing Chun Kung Fu back in 2004. And, and that was during the year when I didn't really work hardly any anything I just had a little few hours a week and I focused just focused on me meditation every day um, doing Wing Chun twice a week I wasn't eating any meat at all I was a vegetarian during that time but that's I wouldn't say that's related the only thing I would say about the vegetarianism is I lost weight um, yeah, I lost weight. I went down to 11 and a half stone. At the moment, I'm 15 and a half stone. So I, I lost, and I suppose I was about 13 and a half before that. So I lost about two stone. So I think that helped as well. But I didn't feel very strong, which is quite weird. I felt quite, not weak, but just uh, still a bit jittery. But that was just you know part of the whole thing, I guess. I stopped eating sweets. I stopped eating um, chocolate, candy, whatever you want to call it. Because I was trying to reduce um, the sugar inside me from pushing my uh, level of energy, I guess, too high. And then dropping, because with sugar, you know, it's a big boost, but it's synthetic. And then it, you drop down again, uh, the energy wise. And with the panic attacks, it felt like someone was outside of me was um, starting my adrenaline, like a you know like a chainsaw, <laughs> but those just like kickstarting my adrenaline, and it just started and bang, I was suddenly kind of on uh, focused and completely on edge and everything, and. This could happen on its own anyway, but when I'd eat sugar, especially, you know, I've got quite, I used to quite like eating chocolate, and that used to be it. I used to be able to sort of like um, have quite an effect on me. Negatively, you know. But everyone's different. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same for everyone. I mean, it was, I actually did go through a period when I thought I, I must be. I must be diabetic because of my reaction to sugar but I wasn't it was the panic attacks it was the the anxiety so you got the doing the 
meditation. I would recommend meditation to anybody, and not learning it from me, um, but going to a place, going somewhere where they do meditation. Uh, it doesn't have to be a religious place. Um, you may find there's a lot of places, or there's at least one place near you where you live that has a Buddhist center. And even though it's a Buddhist center, you should be welcome to go along, do the meditation and then leave. Um, I'm not saying that they keep you hostage. I'm just saying that you don't have to go there to learn about Buddhism. It's about meditation. And um, if you if you want to get into Buddhism, then that's up to you. It's your choice. I just know that my Buddhist center, I was interested in Buddhism as well from a very early age. Um, but meditation is why I went there. The Buddhism was secondary. For me, it was about trying to get my self back, trying to find who I was and trying to gain a bit more control over this. It was like some kind of mind gremlin that was uh, pulling my strings. I felt like a bit of a puppet being just controlled uh, and not having any sense or idea about what, you know, how I was going to feel. Um, so I had all this stuff. I was diagnosed with panic disorder or anxiety disorder and then um, you know various different things over the years but by you know it did eventually calm down there was one thing that triggered me to actually look at it differently because I know that I was really sensitive it made me more sensitive uh, so I went from not being very sensitive at all uh, to being extremely sensitive it kind of forced me to be sensitive to how I physically felt and I was in this little job I had in in 2004 I don't remember much of the job actually but I remember this one particular time it was in I think August and I was sitting on the internet just googling something or on Amazon or something like that and I felt a vibration in my groin and I went into panic. I literally like instantly went into a panic attack. I was like struggling to breathe and like really kind of, you know, just um, thinking I was gonna die or, you know, really, it was quite extreme, it was really quick. Then I realized it was my mobile phone. It was on silent so I wasn't allowed to have it ringing loud, you know, when I was uh, on the shop floor. So I had it on silent and it was buzzing. It was on mobile phone. Instantly, the panic attack went. It just disappeared. That's when I realized that actually, it's not real. It's not really real. It feels real. And the after effects are just horrible you know I'm the first person to just admit that it changed my life uh, dramatically but at that point and onwards I've still had panic attacks since then and um, it's something different I'm not spending all day expecting it like I did before uh, because that was what the trigger was, just the tiniest little thing. And I went into panic thinking, you know, that vibration in my groin uh, was a sign of something because I went through a phase where my muscles were spasming them in and because of the stress and anxiety and I was kind of all over the place. Then I realized, you know, How can I let something like this control me? How can I allow a mobile phone ringing on vibration to send me into a panic attack? How can I allow that to happen? 
And apart from the fact that it was funny after I realised it was the phone, that's why I kind of saw the humour in it. How can we allow other things, other people, to have that effect on us? Because it's not fair, is it? It's not, it's not fair on us. So from that moment onwards, back in 2004, it changed something in my brain, a kind of uh, a realisation that I wasn't as broken as I thought I was. I really just accepted being broke. I don't mean financially. I've always been financially broke, but I accepted that I was emotionally, physically, mentally, just completely um, at the mercy of this unpredictable, invisible force called we call panic attacks. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm not at the mercy of that. I never will be at the mercy of it. I have had them since. But they don't rule my life. Um, I have stress issues with the bipolar. I'm not going to admit, I'm not going to like um, admit, I'm not going to pretend that uh, everything's perfect and I'm this um, perfectly even and adjusted person with no issues of anxiety or stress or panic, which is why I'm doing these sessions because I can transform your life because look where I am, look where I am now. I'm much better now than I was before, which is true. I am much better than I was before. However, I know what it's like to feel stressed and I still do at times and I'm on medication for bipolar I have a brain thing a disorder in the brain or I'm not a big fan of the word disorder but you know I'm just uh, I don't mind it saying about myself so much at least I'm not being derogatory against somebody else but it's a brain thing a mind thing it's a mixture of various different things it could be hereditary it could be the brain it could be both it could be caused by you know childhood issues you know by neglect or abuse or whatever it's trauma so there's lots of different ways that somebody can uh, be triggered into having uh, something like bipolar, depression, things like that. So I'm less interested in what causes these things, which is what psychologists and psychiatrists, well, psychologists are more interested in what causes them. Psychiatrists are interested in how they can um, numb them down with drugs um, both useful things but I'm interested in how to deal with things with without not just without drugs because of course you take whatever drugs you're being prescribed from the doctor I'm not a doctor um, but this is an additional thing that you can use some people don't take any medication for whatever reason. Maybe they don't need to. Um, so this is for everybody. This is for those that do take medication. This is for th those that don't take medication. It's for everybody that has anxiety, stress, uh, maybe leading to panic. Um, those, I've said this before, but I've seen people laugh at the idea of panic attacks um, and I said to them just like if you knew what it was like of course everything's different for everybody you know we all experience different things differently 
but I've spoken to enough people who have had anxiety attacks, panic attacks, um, and there is a similarity. There's a big similarity between um, how people feel and the experience of it. And the, the description really kind of matches like a little map, you know, like a little tick, tick sheet. And I say to people who are like mock it, say, you know, trust me, if you ever had one, you wouldn't mock it. You would, you've got no idea what it's like to have one. And I guess it's the same for everything, isn't it? You don't, we don't know what something's like till it, we experience it. But I think the worst part of the panic attack is in a sense that, the sense that there's nothing wrong with you. You know, it's, I don't know, just that there's nothing wrong, that there's actually nothing wrong with you at all, yet you're having all these feelings and you feel ill, but there's nothing wrong with you. Well, it's not totally true because if you're stressed and anxious, then there is something that needs, if there's something wrong, it means it needs attention. Something needs to change. Which is where mindfulness, meditation, uh, hypnosis, relaxation, a massage maybe, uh, yoga, aromatherapy, um, acupuncture, reflexology, um, just you know, dancing even, or swimming. I'm quite impressed with how many things I come up with. But lots of, so many different things that might actually be useful. Even things like doing jigsaw puzzles or doing those uh, colouring in books that are for adults to have for relaxation. Listening to music, playing music. There's lots of things, painting, art, you know, lots of things that can help you to focus on something else. So you can focus on how you feel, but your mind is focused on that. It's not focused on how am I going to feel next? How am I going to feel next? When's the next, when's the next panic going to happen and all that stuff. It's a different mindset. So I do you not, know, I'd recommend looking at all those different things that you can do. Because if you are serious about helping yourself to relieve your stress and anxiety, then it might take a bit of effort, you know, on your side. Um, it might mean getting help, you know, getting counselling. I found counselling helped. I saw. I've lost count of the amount of counsellors I've seen actually, I've seen quite a few counsellors. I actually became a counsellor in order to help myself. So I spent three years at university full time to become a qualified counsellor so that I could um, understand myself better and find a way to deal with this. And I wasn't even diagnosed with bipolar till after I finished the course. That's, uh, I don't know why I find that funny, just all them years and not being diagnosed correctly. That's another thing is try and find someone that listens to you, a doctor that actually listens. Someone uh, refer yourself, try and get referred to a psychiatrist. And it's not about getting medication, it's about getting the support and the help that you may need. Um, it might be going to a bipolar support group if you're bipolar or um, a group helping with people with panic attacks. It might be help with diet, it might be help with, it might be helping you get a free pass to the local swimming pool if you haven't got any money to pay for it. Um, you know, it could be lots of different ways around uh, helping yourself. so that you're not just doing it on the internet um, so that you're doing more you're active being physically active 
really helps with stress, anxiety. And I can't offer that here. Of course, when you're listening to me, there's no physical activity. Uh, I move my arms around. I probably lose about a stone every time I've done a video because I move my arms around so much. But um, <laughs> I don't know why. Why I do it? The thing is, it's not a one pronged approach. It needs to kind of as many ways as you can all aiming at the same thing can help so if your aim is to reduce stress to increase relaxation you can do lots of different things you can listen to my sessions of course that's why I'm here you can also maybe go swimming once a week see your doctor and try and get um, sent to a specialist try and get uh, some support you know maybe counseling something like that so you can talk about what's going on and some people don't realize the benefit of that there's a there's a lot of people that would sort of and I know people that say that to me which is I'm probably not the best person to say it to considering I'm a counselor but they just they say that oh What's the point in just talking about stuff? Well, you only know if you try it. You know, it's it's not for everybody. Not nothing is for everybody. Um, but just do what's necessary, what you can to help. Maybe look up meditation in your area. And if you feel, if for whatever reason you don't want to go on your own, maybe go with a friend or a family member. Get some support with that. And it gives you, it's like a, a double, a double benefit really, in a sense of you're getting out of your home. You know, you're going to be around people. And you're also going to be learning meditation, which can transform your life. And it's also something that you can do at home once you've learned it and it's very easy to learn you don't need to go to um, a meditation center to learn it but the benefits of being in a room with other people that are meditating is actually uh, quite amazing it's like quite a powerful thing that energy uh, we all we are is energy so we are connected all of us especially when you're in a room with 20 or 30 people all meditating there's there's a lovely atmosphere there and you may find that your meditation is much easier when you're in a group so it's nice to have that um, opportunity just to get out be around people you'll make new friends maybe your friendship with your um, the person you go with will become stronger as well and then maybe also you'll realize you're getting out more and you like being out more and you discover more about yourself and it can lead you to a different life a lot of people you know will have their life transformed by going to meditation or by going to yoga by going swimming every week or every twice a week because whatever you do then leads you in a different direction it doesn't lead you from the path that you're aiming at if you've got an aim if you've got a goal it doesn't lead you away from your goal if your goal is to I don't know whatever it might be um, to write a book if your goal is to write a book it doesn't change that it'll, it'll increase your capability to do the things that you wish to do in the future but your life will improve that's my suggestion in this my hypnotic suggestion your life will improve but it will I've experienced it I've done it and
even though with the diagnosis of bipolar I would say I'm in a better place now than I was back in 2002 2003, 2004 in some ways I kind of like to be younger again but you know not, not a lot I can do about that I mean my personal um, suggestion for a secret of I don't know, changing your life or it's not a secret but there's a feeling that I believe and maybe it's just me I don't think it is though there's a feeling that you will get from helping other people that you will never get anywhere else and I'm not just talking about helping your friends or your family that's the thing that most people would do anyway I'm talking about doing something specifically to help others which is why I do the hypnosis stuff and I get a great deal of not always but sometimes a great deal of satisfaction especially when someone posts a video uh, like today uh, Boston Chicky posted a video uh, on my on her Facebook page included me in it and it was one of my videos but she posted a comment saying how she'd been driving in her car and had some anxiety something like that and used one of my techniques and pulled over used one of my techniques and it helped so that uh, a message like that actually sets me up for the day it feels nice to know that what I'm doing is useful and I've had lots of comments from people saying that they listen to my videos every single day uh, some people use them to get to sleep, other people use them for different reasons. Um, sometimes I don't hear about it until I've actually deleted one of my, my channels and then they start emailing me and saying, where's your, where's your videos now? Where are they gone? Which means I have to leave the, the videos up. I can't, can't remove them because people rely on them. But I realise this hasn't been like a regular daily session. So, you know where I've like closed your eyes not asked you to close your eyes and stuff but I thought it might be useful just to share with you a little bit of my own experience of stress and anxiety and I've only barely touched on the subject for how it's been with me um, but with the panic attacks especially that was I didn't want to go into details, the gruesome details of how I felt and, you know, ending up in hospital and uh, the accident emergency ward thinking I was having heart attacks and that happened at least twice and but that was horrible but you know what? Two things it gave me. I felt guilty. I was, I was laying in the A&E I was put, you know, at the head of other people that were waiting because I'm in my 40s and I'm having, no, I wasn't in my 40s. It's actually, it's happened, I think maybe three times. It happened a few years back as well when I was in my 40s. So I've gone straight through to be seen because I'm, you know, middle-aged man with pain and some um, chest pains. So I get seen quick. And... I'm sitting there on the bed and opposite me is an uh, elderly couple, you know, very, very elderly. Uh, I think it was uh, the woman's on the bed and the man's sort of next to her, her husband, I guess. And she looks really ill, like she's, you know, possibly coming to the end of her life or is, you know, very ill. And I felt really guilty because I was taking up a bed. And they, she clearly needed the bed, and I didn't need the bed. And I wasn't in bed, but I was on top of one of the emergency beds uh, in the ward. And I did start crying. Like I had to stop myself from like howling, but I was kind of started crying just because just before that, um, the doctors said I was fine. I was okay. They gave me blood pressure, and they put me on a machine for an hour or something to check my heart 
and they told me I was okay. It was uh, anxiety, probably panic attack anxiety. But what it also gave me in retrospect is compassion for people going through what I went through. Compassion for people, um, firstly, or just, yeah, people that are going through uh, panic attacks. Because the problem with it is not knowing if it is a panic attack. So it's kind of decide whether it is or not. Um, but that's where the mindfulness, relaxation, all of those kind of things can help with that. Um, and another time, although I didn't have a panic attack, I was ill for a, nearly I was about 10 months I was ill. Uh, back in 95, end of 94, 95. And I was, I had bleeding out of my, one of my orifices. I, just, I don't want to really go into details, but I had pains in my stomach. Every time I ate, every time I did anything, I was basically, it was just going right through me. I was ill. I felt ill. I was like cramping in my stomach. And for ages, I was on medication, all kinds of things. And kept going to the doctor every couple of weeks the doctor just didn't know what to do in the end I had ultrasound I went to the hospital and they were ultrasound in all my major organs and they stuck a thing down my throat camera I did that first actually and then to see if I had ulcers or anything was going on down there that was horrible um, and then they gave me a blood test and they said you know they were looking for something serious it's, which they shouldn't, I don't think they should have told me that because uh, that was quite a long wait when I got the blood test to have to go back and get the results but I had to go back and see two consultants, two doctors in there and I, I was just waiting to you know, be told bad news I didn't have any support, didn't have anybody with me to hold my hand as it were uh, so I didn't have any support on that and they said I was fine must be stress I started laughing. I just couldn't believe it. I just so all this time it's because I'm stressed that I've been ill. I was really ill, really never felt like that before, not for that period of time. It was absolutely awful. And uh they gave me antidepressants uh, and within a short time the pain stopped. I put on weight. I put on about half a stone, I felt healthier, and everything just went back to how it was. I felt fine. Or fine, I was a bit tired, and I didn't, I didn't like the antidepressants, but I was a bit tired, which has always had an effect on me that way. But I wasn't ill. And that's the first time I realised that stress, how stress can have such a huge effect. Um, I'm, not ex I'm, I'm not exaggerating how ill I was. It lasted for a long time. I wasn't working either. I couldn't work. So yeah, it's a... Uh, that's why it needs to be addressed. That's why I do these sessions. I realise I've waffled on. I'm sorry if I've waffled on too much. But uh, I think it's important also f to acknowledge what's going on and to realise that there's more available than uh, what I offer, you know, than, than hypnosis. There are other things uh, as well that you can use that I would recommend. If I was counselling and you were my, f my client, I would probably, before hypnosis, I would say yoga or meditation. Something that connects your body and your mind so you focus on both 
I know hypnosis does as well, the way I do it, um, because I very much focus on the body and the mind, and that's the whole point of why I'm doing it, because it's to help you to integrate those feelings and to be aware of those feelings so that they don't control you, you know, anymore. So that you can have more ability and flexibility to just be with yourself and at the same time be able to have control over what you do and how you think and you know to be at ease to be relaxed to be calm and hopefully to be happy that's what I'm aiming for here uh, and that's why I'm going to continue to do these every day until I'm old and grey well I'm already getting there so um, but I'm going to continue doing these because the most important thing I could do in my life is helping other people it might sound conceited it might sound pretense I don't know but it's true there's nothing more important for me to do in my life than to help other people and the only real way that I can help other people is by doing these videos uh, in a to help a large, larger audience, as the audience grows, that is. And at the moment, the audience isn't big, but it will grow. Um, in the past, I've had you know quite a big audience over the years. It's just a, it's a new channel, so I'm kind of growing it again. It's like a baby cucumber. It's growing every day. So I wish you well, and I've I've rabbit it on. Do have a tendency to do that it's the only thing that i can do it's just what i do i struggle to do short sessions um when i first started doing these daily relaxation hypnosis sessions my plan was to do 10 minutes i just can't do 10 minutes uh i don't know why i just i'm just a waffler so um it's not for everyone but if you if you like what i do then you know i appreciate your support um, so I'm going to go have a really good day or a really good sleep whatever you're planning to do and I kind of feel I should put a head into this video talking about bipolar and panic attacks and stuff so you kind of know what it's uh, what it's about but the heading is already quite long for the um, session so I'm just going to leave it as being a number whatever day it is day nine I think number nine so take care of yourselves and I wish you you know all the happiness and just see you tomorrow thank you goodbye